All content is publicly sourced and used under the USA Fair Use and UK Fair Dealing Guidelines. The things I say are strictly my opinion. Good afternoon, everyone. It's the Busy Bee with the Royal T. Hope you're all having a great Sunday. It is September the 20th. Oh my goodness. This is the tombstone of Lady Jane Grey in the Tower of London's uh, Chapel of St. Peter. I wanted to mention something before I get started. You all remember a few weeks ago the anniversary of Diana's death. The Harkles went to that school and planted some flowers, and they also drug along a packet of forget-me-not seeds so they could uh, get their name in the papers for planting flowers in tribute of Diana, blah, blah, blah. Of course we remember that. That story's been told and retold almost as many times as the roasted chicken incident. Anyway, well, after that was in the paper on uh, the anniversary of Diana's death, the 31st of August, I went to Megan's Mirror, and I checked it out, and the outfit she was wearing at that school was not there. And, you know, I thought to myself, the outfit's not on Megan's Mirror. Maybe she actually has some uh, respect for the, the anniversary of her mother-in-law's passing. She's not going to try to merch the outfit that she was wearing that day. I thought, Wow, I have to give her a little credit for doing that. Usually, when she makes a public appearance, she merches the outfit on Megan's mirror. She didn't do it. Wow. I thought, she really deserves some credit for that. That is a first. That was like putting a, a plate of candy in front of a child and leaving them alone and telling them, you know, don't eat a piece of it. So, Megan didn't do it. I thought, I really have to give her credit. And then a few days ago, I checked Megan's mirror, and what do you know? She was merching the shirt she was wearing that day. So it's kind of like this. If uh, it takes like three or four business days for a check to clear the bank sometimes. So before you give Smegs credit for anything, you need to wait at least three to four working days. The shirt was only $60, which I know some people say only $60. However, only $60, you could go to Ross's or Marshall's and get a shirt for half that price. And you could wear it to work or wherever, not just to wear it, a $60 shirt to plant flowers in. With, uh, she makes me disgusted and sick. Let's move along. <laughs> Thank you so much to Deidre D. She left me a tip on PayPal. I really appreciate that. And of course, the patrons, Kim and Christine D. For today's history minute. I know that one of my viewers in particular has asked me to do this. Today it is Queen Jane, Lady Jane Grey, the Queen of Nine Days, the Nine Day Queen, however you prefer to say it. Her reign was, as I stated, nine days, the 10th of July to the 19th, 1553. She received an excellent education and had a reputation not a reputation like Smegs's, but a reputation as one of the most learned young women of her day. She was the first cousin once removed of her predecessor, Edward VI, the boy king. She was the great-granddaughter of Henry VII, father of Henry VIII. In June 1553, Edward VI wrote his will, making Jane his heir and bypassing his half-sister, Mary, due to the fact that she was Catholic. After Jane was proclaimed queen, support for Mary grew, and Jane was deposed nine days later. Although Mary initially agreed to spare Jane's life, she reneged, and Jane was executed on the 12th of February, 1554, at about 16 years old. Jane is the only English monarch in the last 500 years of whom no proven contemporary portrait survives. This portrait that I showed of her a few moments ago, I believe that they confirmed that to be of Catherine Parr. For years, they had thought it was Jane Grey, but later on, as I said, they confirmed it to be of Catherine Parr. So we don't have an actual image of Lady Jane. Oh, and I have to say, if you're interested in Tudor history, yesterday I watched a wonderful podcast called Talking Tutors. Uh, Claire Ridgway was the guest, and they were talking about Anne Boleyn's execution and her final resting place. It was about an hour long, but it was very interesting. You must check it out. I think you would just type in Claire Ridgway, Talking Tutors podcast, Anne Boleyn, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I do have something also. 
I did watch a recipe, and it was a Tudor recipe on YouTube yesterday, how to make it. It was a roasted pork roast, or I'm sorry, a pork roast. You roast it in the oven, and then the gravy that you put on it, it, it sounded really good. And I had a pork roast in the freezer. It's downstairs being thawed out right now. I'm going to make it. I'll take some pictures, let you know how it turns out. For today's episode of As the Stomach Turns, The Adventures of the Harkles, well, I'm sure you've all heard this by now, and I plan to make this video on Tuesday when I got off work, but I started having some uh, a really bad cough on Tuesday, and um, it just progressed, and I finally started feeling better yesterday. My voice is back to normal today. So anyway, etc., etc., and I know what you all might be thinking, and when you anybody has a cough lately, you think it's that thing that's going around, but no, it wasn't that. It was just a cough. So, <laughs> so let's check out what is going on with the Harkles. Well, Duchess Smegs, why do they even call her Duchess anymore? Why doesn't the Queen just take that title, Duchess? I'm so tired of her being called that. She's nothing. Nothing. Nothing Smegs calls confidence the best accessory in SmartWorks video call, and I'm sure if she could find some way to merch confidence on Megan's mirror, it would already be for sale on there. But let's listen to the advice that Smegs has to give on being confident in the workplace for all you females out there. <laughs> if you're taking workplace advice from Smegs, the, you're taking the wrong advice. <laughs> You'll get rug burn on your back and on your knees if you're taking working advice from Smegs. Don't do it, ladies. The Duchess joined the chat to celebrate the first anniversary of her workwear capsule collection, the Smart Set. Megan, the nothing of nowhere, celebrated the first anniversary of the launch of the Smart Set, her workwear capsule collection created for the charity SmartWorks. Oh, these poor ladies, if they're having to wear these clothes that Megan designs, she has no taste, no class, nothing to offer. I, I'm sure these clothes are absolutely hideous, hideous, hideous. Yes, Megan joined a video call to speak to a group of women whose lives have been changed by SmartWorks. <laughs> Megan is changing lives? <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. She's changing lives, everybody. Oh, what a do-gooder. Oh, Smeg celebrated the first anniversary of the launch of the Smart Set, a capsule collection of oh, the Smart Set that definitely wouldn't include her husband. And it's a capsule collection of workwear aimed at supporting women rejoining the workforce. Smegs worked in collaboration with the charity SmartWorks to create the collection. In honor of the anniversary, Megan joined a video chat with three women who have been helped to secure new jobs as the charity helps to prepare and dress women for success. Speaking with three SmartWorks clients, Carla, Charlene, and Agnieszka, Megan said, People can say that so much of SmartWorks is about the clothes themselves, but it's really not. All of that stuff is the exterior, but it's what it does for you on the inside that ends up being the best accessory. It's the confidence. It's what is built within. That is the piece that you walk out of that room with and walk into the interview with. Oh, my heart is just moving. Oh my goodness, those words. Can you believe it? I bet she didn't write a word of that herself. She probably Googled uh, inspirational quotes about job interviews or preparing for job interviews and she found a really long one and then uh, replaced a few pronouns like uh, replaced an it with a they or a she with a we or and then called it her own. You know how she does. In a press release the charity said the team at SmartWorks would like to take this opportunity to thank Smegs for her continued support of our charity. The retail partners who came together to help create their original collection Whoa! The retail partners who created... So, wait a minute. Smegs didn't actually design the clothes. It was actually fashion retail designers who created the collection. So, what did Smegs actually do besides put her ugly face on the side of the thing and, and brand it and market it? She didn't do anything! Oh, oh, oh. My goodness, this girl is so fake all around, isn't she? She didn't design these clothes, and the 
place just smart set just put out a statement saying the retail partners who helped create their original collection smegs didn't design this what a fibber the wonderful supporters who purchased pieces and helped fill our wardrobes so these pieces weren't given to these ladies they had to purchase these so how is this a charity this is so much oh nonsense with these two everywhere everything's a mirage everything's a lie it's like you've been caught out in the desert for like three or four days with no water and you're you're seeing mirages of palm trees and and you know and a lovely lush oasis it's like everything is fake with these two nothing is real okay a few comments from my last video about the harkles repaying their frogmore debt plus a few ideas i had for their netflix content oh boy who in their right minds are going to work for this pair in their productions? Can you imagine how many staff they will go through? A turnstile will need to be installed at the front door. Secondly, who is going to watch the mess these two idiots produce? A turnstile at the door? Smegs? You know exactly what I'm thinking, and if you don't, then this is probably the first video of mine you've ever seen. <laughs> if you don't, though, I'll get to that at the end of the video. Stick around. Netflix most likely paid them a signing bonus and or an advance against production. Both are standard in the entertainment business to tie talent exclusively to a studio or in this case a platform. Netflix now owns them. So much for freedom. Finding freedom, finding chains, right? Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. All right, tell it, Janice. Nothing, but it's nothing if they ain't free. Uh, no, they're not free. They're chained to Netflix for the rest of their lives. A contribution? Sounds like tax sneakiness to me. And I say they're chained to Netflix for the rest of their lives because if they have to make content that comes up with to pay back $150 million, they're going to be making content for quite a while. So what have we learned today, everyone? Well, I should say the first thing that we've learned is before you give Smegs credit, like a check from uh, someone who's not too trustworthy, you must wait several business days to let the credit clear. All right, number one, like Smegs, Lady Jane Grey had a reputation, uh, but for an altogether different reason. Number two, Smega is allegedly changing lives, and not just due to the home wrecking and viral infestations she leaves in her wake. Number three, the Harkles will go through so many staff, they will need a turnstile at the front door. They can save money by using the one at the entrance to Smegs' bedroom. Number four, finding freedom means being the slave of a corporation for the foreseeable future. Number five, the only thing Smegs has ever contributed to was the Los Angeles clap outbreak of 2007. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is Valerie Friday morning uh, when I was working in my office. Uh, she climbed up on the futon I have in there and was just really uh, relaxing and chilling. <laughs> And look at this. This is Edward. This is a blanket I bought two weeks ago. He and Gemma dragged it off the bed. And you see that? They uh, tore a hole in it, chewing on it, and ripped out all the cotton stuffing in it, as you see there. And look at Gemma. She knows that she did wrong. Look at her. I was getting on to her about it, and she's looking the other way. <laughs> oh, what a character. But this is her right now. She's laying here at the foot of the bed. I'm, I'm sitting on my bed, and she's, uh, she's back in the good graces, I guess. <laughs> so if you would like to send me love notes, tokens of appreciation, or toys and treats for the three ladies and one gentleman, this is the P.O. Box. And this is a picture of them, Valerie, Myrtle, Edward, and Jim Jim. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit the notification button. I will see you all in the next one. <clears throat> see, there goes my voice, all that coughing I've been doing lately. But um, I'll see you all in the next one. I'm going to make my uh, Tudor roasted pork, one of Henry VIII's favorites for dinner tonight. I will certainly let you all know how it turns out. And uh, since I've been gone for a while trying to get over that cough, 
I'm going to try to come out with another video today because uh, I'm back to 100% and, uh, you know, I'm back to my old cheerful self. <laughs> and I'm ready to rip Smegs to shreds. So <laughs> I'll see you all in the next one, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, I really appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.